Hello everyone, welcome to the course on simulating fluid flows using Python. It's really great to see that many of you are now joining this course. And if you haven't already, please check out all the past uploads so that you can come up to date. And not only that, you would be able to ask questions if you have any doubts. And even more importantly, please provide your feedback because that helps me to understand whether what I'm teaching here, whether you are able to grasp it or not. And if there are any mistakes, which we are going to talk about today, because there were some. So if there are any mistakes, please don't hesitate to write them down in the comments or you can also email me. So hopefully all of you are now up to date with whatever we have taught. And in the lecture today, we are going to start our discussion with some of the clarifications and corrections. So thankfully, one of the course members had pointed it out that there were some points that were causing confusions and it was better if I could answer them now. So I would start the lecture with that, but more importantly, our focus would be on some of the Python statements and syntax. So here I want to give you an idea of how you were going to write the code. So based on the feedback that I received in the MATLAB series, I was told that I should not try to spoon feed the code, but rather I should tell about how to write the code and let you guys try to write the code first. So with this lecture today, I want to write, uh, I want to give you all the pieces that you might want to assemble together in order to get a working code. So I'll talk about the indexing as to how the indexing is done in Python. I'll talk about some loops and some statements. So I'll talk about while statement and for loop that would uh, sort of form a backbone to your code. And also I'll talk about how you can put all these things together in order to get that code. So just as a reminder, this would be a code that we want to write for one dimensional heat conduction. And we have already seen the discretized equations and every theoretical aspect of this particular problem in the past lectures. So hopefully you'll be able to follow along. Stick until the end and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. So one of the mistakes that I might have been doing in the past lecture or two was that I was interchangeably using the word time step and iterations. So as rightly pointed out by Rajkumar that uh, time step should not be used in this context because we're not really dealing with a transient problem or we're not dealing with a problem that involves time. So the technically the correct word that we should use here is iteration. So iteration is supposed to be derived from an iterative process in which we are sort of repeating a procedure over and over again. So as I had described for this one dimensional heat conduction scenario, we would be needing to update the temperature values over and over again until we get to a steady state or a converged solution. So the correct word here that I should be using from here on should be iteration. And I would use time step as and when it would be needed. So when we would talk about unsteady flow problems or wherever we have a time derivative, then the correct word over there should be time step. And also in the past for this particular problem, I had stated that there are certain initial conditions that were describing the problem. So technically there should not be no initial conditions because this is not an initial value problem. So I hope that if you remember something from your high school, partial differential equations could be a type of initial value problem or it could be a type of boundary value problem. Or to generalize it, boundary value problems are those where we have a fixed boundary conditions and initial value problems are those where we are given an initial condition to begin with. So this particular problem that is a one dimensional steady heat conduction, it is only a pure boundary value problem. But since I have given that initial conditions, I have to justify as to why I was doing that. And my reason was because while writing the codes, it is better if you start with an initial uh, condition or an initial solution. So just in a sense that you might have to initialize that variable, we would be using those initial conditions. So this is not directly related to the physics of the problem. This is more of a coding practice that we would be deriving it from. So hopefully this would be able to give you a more clarity or more clear picture of what we were doing. So. Having answered that, 
if there are any more mistakes or any more corrections that you might have observed please please report it to me because sometimes it happens that even after multiple revisions of my slides and my lecture content some of the things i happen to look over so please report it to me if you see any more corrections so i'll start the lecture today with a discussion on indexing and this becomes very important because every programming package or every software they might have their own way of indexing your grid system so remember we were saying about indexing that it is a process that is synonymous to counting and from a cfd perspective it could be useful for identification of grid points so remember we had a grid system in this case for a finite volume mesh for a one dimensional finite volume mesh we could have a set of grid points along the x direction so some of our grid points could be on the boundary it is not a necessary criteria but the system that we had adopted it had certain grid points on the boundary so now when python tries to understand these grid points it assigns a number or it assigns a index to those grid points and that is what is referred to as index so here on the bottom as you can see the first point that python sees it indexes that point as 0 so mathematically you might want to start counting as 1 2 3 4 5 and so on but from the python's perspective it starts counting from 0 that the first point it would have a index of 0 so whenever you want to call it or whenever you want to refer it you have to use 0 as its index so this is very similar to c in uh, c programming whereas in matlab as we had seen in the last series the indexing was very different so this is one of the key differences that you might want to observe and secondly if you observe in this particular grid we have six grid points so i have six grid points in this photo here but my index because it's starting from 0 therefore the last point would have a index of 5 and equivalently if i want to generalize it if i have n number of points in my grid then the index for the last point would be n minus 1 so this would be useful when we would be talking about loops because we have to tell the code for how many grid points we have to do the calculations so mind you that n minus 1 index and n grid points all right so next part is about the while statement so recall that we have to tell the code as to until when that code has to run and for that we have to calculate a numerical error and we have to compare it with a epsilon or some sort of threshold or some sort of tolerance so to compare it with the tolerance and to tell the code that you have to run or not it can be done very conveniently using a while statement so to summarize while is a conditional statement that is able to execute something so all the entries that are coming under the while statement that would be executed while a specified condition is met so we would have a certain condition if that condition is met then the part would be executed if it's not then it would not be executed so for this particular case we can write while the numerical error is greater than epsilon so this is exactly the syntax that you would be using in python so in python you would need this colon to terminate this while statement so here while is the python statement that is why i am defining it in red numerical error is something that you would calculate from your calculations so numerical error for example you can calculate from this expression where i am summing up so this is the sign of summation from i equals to 0 to n minus 1 so i'm summing it from the first point all the way to the last point so here i is my index so that is why it goes from 0 to n minus 1 and what i'm summing i'm summing up the absolute value of the new temperature minus the old temperature so after the iteration there would be some differences and i'm trying to sum those differences or rather sum the average absolute value of those differences over the entire grid and i'm saying that while the numerical error is greater than epsilon which is my threshold of the error or my error tolerance so this is how i can program that while statement so this would be useful if i want to tell the code until when you have to execute yourself the next part of the puzzle is regarding the for loop so for is a looping statement that is used to carry out multiple repetitive computations 
So remember that we are sort of in a in a iterative situations where we have to carry out the same iterative formula. So we had derived our iterative formula and we have to use that formula on multiple grid points. So to handle these type of situations from a programming perspective, you need a, a looping procedure and this is typically achieved using a for statement. So what for statement does is it takes in a range of the indexes or the indexing points. So in Python, we write for i. So here i is your indexing variable and we write in range. So it tells you the range of the i index and in the bracket, we specify the starting index and the last index. And again, we have to terminate it by a colon. So now I know that this might be confusing, but let me give you the example. So in our case, in the case of steady one dimensional heat conduction, we had a grid like this where we had six points and our Python indexes goes from zero to five. So because we have the fixed boundary conditions, therefore we don't have to worry about the boundary points. So I have to calculate from the point one all the way to point four. So if I have to write the for loop here, what I would write is for i in range and in the brackets, I would write one comma four. So that would tell Python that you have to do whatever it is written under the for loop, take the index i and vary it from one to four. So first the uh, point would be taken as one, then the point would be taken at two, three and four. So until I have not done the fourth points calculation, the loop wouldn't stop. So the loop would execute four times. So this is only true when we have the fixed boundary conditions. So if we have a different boundary conditions, the starting and end index could vary. So having done the for loop, we have two variables. We have a T, which was now at the old iteration, and we have a T new, which is now the updated values of temperature. So using this T and T new, we can calculate the numerical error. And also, because if we have to continue the iterative procedure, we have to say that this T should be equals to T new so that we can do this whole procedure over again. So in this case, to assign the value of T new to T in Python, you can write this statement, which says that T equals to T new and followed by a dot copy brackets. So this particular syntax assign or copies whatever is stored in T new into the T variable. I know it's a little counterintuitive because so far, at least in MATLAB, we had been written T equals to T new, but this particular process in Python, it doesn't assign the value. So if you write T equals to T new, they sort of think that these are the same variables and not really copy it every time. So whenever we want to do an iterative process, it may not work out very well as you can try to see it yourself. So these are the sort of puzzles that you might need in order to write the code. And just to give you an idea, if we put these things together, we, the code structure might look something like this. So initially we have to initialize all the variables. And when I say variables, I have few scalars that could be N, that is the number of grid point, L, that is the domain size, numerical error, that would be used for calculating the numerical error. So you can call these variables or you can name these variables as per your convenience. Then we have a threshold or a tolerance called as epsilon, and we could have a variable corresponding to the number of iterations that I'm simply calling as iterations. I also have three arrays in this system, one corresponding to X, that is the position vector or the position of every grid point. Then I have two different temperature based arrays, one storing the current values and one that would store the updated values. But the core of my algorithm is over here. And now this is not in terms of words. I'm trying to input as much as Python script as possible. So here I'm writing while the numerical error is greater than epsilon. And here you have to use this column, otherwise the statement would be treated as an error. And within the while statement, because this while statement would only be executed if the numerical error is larger than the tolerance value. So if the numerical error is larger, we say that we have to do the iterative procedure and we say that we have to do the iterative procedure for all these points. 
and the points are or the index of the points is ranging from i start to some i end and within that for loop we have to write the formula that is the iterative formula that we had derived from the finite volume formulation so once we calculate these new values from this particular for loop we can calculate the numerical error and we can then assign the old values and the new values equivalent to each other so we'll assign the new value or we'll copy the new values into the old value because if the numerical error is not smaller than epsilon we have to do this entire for loop process again so we have to use this uh, t variable again and further we can also say that we are we have taken one iteration so therefore you can write something of the equivalent of iterations being iterations plus one so this would give you an idea as to how many iterations would it take for you to converge or for you to achieve that steady state solution so hopefully this would give you an idea to write the script i would show you my script in the next lecture which would be uploaded probably in a couple of days and also in the next lecture i would show you how you can do the visualization because so far we have only obtained the result or we have only obtained the temperature distribution in the x direction but in order to visualize the result we have to create a plot so we might have to create a temperature versus x plot so i would tell you how to do that in python in the next lecture but until then please try to write the code this is the reason why i am trying to give you all the uh, specifics but i'm not giving you the code so that you can try it out yourself you face those bugs that are usually encountered in the coding process and i know that most of you and many of you will be able to find the solution all those bugs so this would be a really good learning experience for you and i hope that you will do it and in the next lecture we would also talk about how you can label your axis as to how you can define what is plotted on the x or y axis and we'll also look at how you can customize your plot such as the line styling so the next lecture will focus more or less on plots but before you come to those plots you have to get the data that you might want to plot so hopefully you'll have that data but we'll see in the next lecture about plotting until then please take care i hope you and your family and your friends stay safe as well see you in the next lecture